Hello, this is Joel Hathaway, and I'm continuing my interview uh, with Covenant Seminary alumni in this strange hour of quarantine and pandemic. And today, I'm talking with Tom Becker, who is a 1999 Master of Divinity graduate. Uh, Tom is the founder of The Row House. It's a public outreach uh, group or organization focused on engaging current culture with ancient faith. Tom, I could probably read what's on your website, but I would love if you would maybe just tell us a little bit more about you as a family and also your ministry with The Row House. Uh, sure, I'll start with my family. Um, Becky and myself uh, live here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania in a small city, about 60,000. Uh, we've been here since 99 when I graduated. And um, we came and did some experimental bookshop outreaches, uh, kind of like Labrie kind of lecture type thing. And we were doing that while we were doing RUF campus ministry. And um, I enjoyed doing that. It turns out I'm, I really enjoy being a curator and showcasing different kinds of people, practitioners of the faith and experts and scholars. So I was doing that and then I was teaching for a while and doing, still dabbling in these kind of uh, very creative outreaches. Um, and then in 2010, I, everything just kind of um, burned to the ground uh, professionally for me. And we had some emotional issues and mental health issues we were dealing with, some exhaustion. But what came out of that was the Row House, uh, which is um, uh, an organization, a, a board, of people and friends and we just started doing these events more regularly once twice a month and I kind of built a an organization around it that I could um, begin to make a living doing it I didn't know I'd ever make a living doing it I'm still not exactly but um, it's my life's work so 10 years in we've done I'm, I'm sure at least 100 events um, lecture events concerts art shows discussions I've spoken I've written a book so a lot of stuff has happened through the Row House Incorporated, but it's centered on live events. So I'm going a little bit off script here, but if if uh, any of our alum that have graduated <clears throat> since about 2008 aren't going to aren't going to really have experienced the Barnes and Noble, the Borders talks that Jerem did regularly <clears throat> during your time at Covenant Seminary, I wonder did that impact the way you thought about your time in RUF and also your approach to the Row House? Um, it's a direct ripoff. I mean, you know, I, in my book, I talk about, um, my book's called Good Posture. Even when I was a kid, I was doing like a Beatles festival in my, in my driveway. You know, I kind of like, I was always kind of showing off people and holding events. So it goes way back, but really where it came together with the faith, it was the influence, influence of Labrie and uh, some of the worldview ministries in the 80s, like Probe, that I had experienced on campus. But yeah, when I, got to, when I got to seminary and I saw what Jerem was doing, and particularly Wade Bradshaw, who was kind of his protege. You know, Wade was out there at Borders Books doing a talk on technology. He had a guy talk about chairs, you know, the history of chairs um, and sort of tying the Christian faith to that. I just loved that. I thought that was the coolest thing ever because I too believe that Christ is Lord of everything and God's redeeming everything. He made everything so. Everything should matter. And um, that's a way that we can build bridges to people who are outside the faith by just talking about normal things, everyday human things. So that was already in my system. You're right. And I, I saw it in action in St. Louis and I, I never forgot it. So it makes sense when I came to Lancaster, I was doing RUF and I was evangelizing and discipling, doing all these normal churchy kind of things. And I'm decent at those things. But really what excited me was helping students think about the Christian faith affecting everything, family, you know, academics, philosophy. And so I started dabbling in these events and that's kind of what I do full time. So being that we are in a, a quarantine and a shelter in place and you're a event oriented organization, <laughs> um, I mean, golly, yeah. how, how do you keep going? It's pretty ironic. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the essence of what we're doing is getting people together in a room and being civil and having fun, having food. So we're demonstrating the reality of Christian faith bodily. So incarnation, togetherness, all these things, kind of like on, using church language, the means of grace. Um, and in the public, it's, it, it's great when you can just be in someone's presence and hear them and uh, let them know they're heard and, and give them a hug, you know, 
it's a, it's a really good kind of evangelism. Anyway, all that's dried up. Um, thankfully, the springtime is when I do all my planning for the next season. So we partner with a performing arts center in town and they really don't need my schedule for the next fall till like the end of April, middle of May. So I, I feverishly work with my board and my closest colleagues to create the next season of events. And I do that now anyway. So I'm at home, I'm planning events. I'm working on my website. Our April event um, was canceled, which was gonna be on organic farming, which would have been cool, but we had to cancel that. Um, and then our May event, uh, May 1st, was part of a conference that was canceled, but our speaker from Vermont, whose name is Matthew Dickerson, um, he's one of our return guests. He's able to do it from home. He's very adept with Zoom. He's a professor. So we'll do that online. We'll see how that goes. We'll probably pick up some new people. Um, I'm pushing membership. It's one of the ways that we fund our organization. Um, I'm working on videos to promote our next fall's events. And ironically, I'm also planning 12 new events next year on the 10th of each month um, on sort of random days and stuff to celebrate our 10 years in operation. So this thing better clear up because I'm counting <laughs> six major forums and 12 mini events and celebrations. So, but I'm, I have a sense of humor and I'm keeping a sense of humor about it. And we're doing stuff online. And so far, it's not really been that disruptive. It sounds like a lot of things have uh, stayed the same. Are there yeah. other routines in your own life that you've sought to inculcate or to, uh, to deepen during this time? Yeah, actually, it's been fun. We have two grown kids in Denver married. Uh, we have a grown girl in Philadelphia, an hour away. Our son lives in town, but he's, he's very quiet, very much to himself. We don't see him very much. And then our daughter moved back from Temple in Philadelphia to live with us, so we got her here. So we do these weekly game nights as a family online through Zoom, and they're just a riot. I mean, my kids are just hilarious, and you can't get a word, word in edgewise, and it's just, and we've been spending more time together online. So that's been kind of fun. Um, but besides that, our, our routine is not that disruptive. I mean, we can get groceries. I ride my bike. I walk around town. Um, I work out of my, this library, which is my office in my house. And honestly, day by day, it hasn't been that disruptive. We are feeling the weight of other people who are affected more by it and feel like they're missing out. We have one dear family who's going through cancer treatment and their immunity compromised. So we're sort of the point people for caring for them and people in our church. So that's different. And the only thing I really miss is going out to coffee shops and doing my work. And just, I'm a town character, so I know tons of people. I'm recognizable and I kind of miss that. But I realized through this whole thing is that I think I'm some kind of, a, not an introvert, but I'm very task driven. So if I'm getting my stuff done, I'm happy and I don't need people that much, <laughs> but I, I, I do miss being around people and, and yucking it up. So. so I want to point people to your website. Where do people begin if they get to your website? Are there, are there videos? Are there online events? What, what do you recommend? I recommend you go to therowhouse.org and that'll tell you everything. It tells our vision, more about me, contacting me, uh, becoming a member. Um, we have members from all over the country and also our, our next events. We also have a, um, Past, actually the most important thing might be the past events tab. And in those past events tabs, you can listen to Jamie Smith speak, um, Drew Johnson from New York City, uh, Greg Thornberry from New York City. We have some really stellar talks and some of those are national, some are regional, some are just local people. And I tell you, we, we've had some amazing talks on addiction, um, economics, philosophy, um, you name it. And um, they're just really encouraging and helpful. And we've put them up as audio files on the landing pages. And then also I'm on social media, the rowhouse.org. I'm not hard to find. Tom, is there anything I didn't ask you that you would say, man, I would just love two minutes to talk about this. One of the ideas I'm working on, a little bit of theology I'm working on is coming out of the book of Job. And to consider the idea that God made viruses. And I'm, I'm, sort, of, I'm sort of aping on this idea that uh, the guys in the Bible project touched on is that the book of Job is, is as much about God and his being creator and being distant and all, or being holy and separate. He uses the creation to kind of show Job, to put Job in his place. And the, the creation is pretty wild. It's really a wild place, even under normal circumstances, even before the fall. 
And so he seems to be using that with Job to say, look, Job, hey, were you there when I made the Leviathan? You know, were you like around when I put the stars in place? All that to say, I think Job was reminded, okay, he, he's made from dust and he'll return to dust. And God is holy and he has, you know, lordship over creation. But the creation he made is really wild. It's beyond our imagination. And in itself is some kind of testament or apologetic about who God is. And along with that, viruses. Like viruses are just weird, man. It's just wild. I mean, I don't think we can say they're from the devil. I think they're part of this thing he made. And so I'm sort of trying to explore that a little bit and think about, yeah, this too shall pass and we should fear it. It's a terrible thing. But we live in a really wild world and we live in a world of disruption and calamity and, and a fallen world for sure. And I think as Americans, it's good for us to every 10 years be reminded of that. And as Christians, not be surprised by that. Tom, um, thank you so much for giving me part of your day. Lord's blessings yeah. as you continue your uh, writing into mm -hmm. the coming year. Thank you, Joel. Good to talk to you.